of it. Okay, recording is on now. So sorry. Go ahead, Vlad. Ask your question. Uh, well, thank you very much for clarifying who is sponsoring this. Uh, but just as a follow up, I know that uh, last Friday we mentioned about community bridge. I just wanted to make sure that the timeline uh, is clarified. Uh, is it in parallel with Google Sysn of Docs? Does it go after or before? What is the sequence? And it's they are they are independent of one another in terms of timeline, and so the Google Season of Docs has certainly got a much better start because it's an organized program, systematic. We're already well into it. Um, I we would have to in order to get funding for a, a community bridge project, we have to go to the Jenkins board. The Jenkins board would then have to approve that that funding. Then we negotiate it with Community Bridge. So I would expect, most likely, it is slightly after or concurrent to Season of Docs. It certainly will not precede Season of Docs. I don't think we could get the the machinery running fast enough to have it happen before Season of Docs starts. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now, now, and again, it's all contingent on funding. Therefore. The crucial question is, is the Jenkins board willing to approve the funding of this? And that depends on what the, the budget balances are at the Jenkins board. Mm -hmm. And this will be known closer to the uh, 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 September, I guess. Is it correct? Yeah, I, the timeline, the timeline for discussions about Community Bridge will probably be happening about the same time that we're doing the evaluations of Google Season of Docs project. So July 9th you, is your deadline to submit your, your project proposals. That's also the beginning of the evaluation period. That's, mm -hmm. a, that's a really good time for the Jenkins project to then be considering, all right, we're evaluating all these project proposals. Which of those should we recommend to Google Season of Docs? And which of them should we say, okay, if we can't get it with Google Season of Docs, we would consider doing it in, in Community Bridge. Mm -hmm. So did and that address hello. Oh, go ahead, Jonathan. Hello, Mark. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, the Jenkins has some page, special page uh, explaining more about the Community Bridge project or just this site has all answers for us uh here that's a good question uh i can we've certainly got a a page that describes there's one or more pages that have described here we go jenkins community bridge project oh these are the projects that we had done with community bridge let me see if i can find the one on jenkins.io And it was, oh, oh, yes, yes. In fact, this is the project description. Here you go. So you can, you could actually read about the project that we ran last year through Community Bridge. One of our, one of our potential Google Season of Docs mentors for this year is this student, Slayton Nunes, who was a student last year on, on Community Bridge. So we ran this project last year through Community Bridge, and you can read about it and see see things that, that tell the story of it. Read about his blog posts, etc. Okay, and the Community Bridge is a open project for documentation and code, or oh no, it's just about to develop something or not documentation. Right, That's it's the focus. So, so Community Bridge is is a Linux Foundation vehicle uh, that we can use to fund a project of any sort. Any last sort. year All we right. funded a last year we funded a software development project. This year the idea is should we fund a documentation project? Okay, and uh, we can send the, the exact proposal or we need to adjust in some way to send the proposal to Comrade Bridge. I would, I, I, that part has not yet been, so it's a good question. How, do, how would you submit a proposal? My sense is that has not been defined yet fully. 
I would assume that we will reuse the Google Season of Docs techniques and just say, look, we want to re reuse the Google, Google Season of Docs proposals and, and admit that they're good project proposals because they describe what you want to do, how long you think it's going to take, what resources you'll need, so that they're so effective as a plan that they make a good plan for Community Bridge if we don't use them for Season of Docs. Okay, thank you. All right, and any other questions on Community Bridge? Mark, I just wanted uh, one more time to clarify. So I guess besides budget, there may be other limitations for Community Bridge, bridge project, which may be uh, clarified by, by the board of Jenkins project. Uh, and if those, there are some limitations, they will be announced closer to uh, uh, like end of summertime frame. Right, right. The, the board, the process by which the board selects projects or which they choose to fund an effort is something that has to be negotiated with the board. Yes, absolutely, and and it is then within the within the rights of the board. So members of the board include uh, Oleg Nenashev of of he's the a key leader, and Ulrich Hoffner from a Technical University in Germany, Alex Earl from Broadcom Corporation in actually in Arizona in the United States, and one oh and Kosuke Kawaguchi and Tyler Croy. So so the We've got a we've got a good breadth and depth of people on the board to help make those decisions. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh -huh. Any other questions with regard to Community Bridge? Okay, great. Let's go on to the next topic then. All right. So let's see. We talked about. Community Bridge, we've talked about timeline. Oh, is there an ability for contributors to participate in both? I suspect not. I would assume if you were selected for Google Season of Docs, you would you would be excluded from consideration for Community Bridge. I, I, that's just my assumption. I haven't seen anything that would say that that's forbidden, but the, the Season of Docs projects to me feel like 10 or 12 hours a week, 10 to 20 hours a week for a technical writer who is probably already employed doing something else is a large commitment of your time. And then saying, oh, we'd like you to give another 10 or 20 hours a week to a community bridge project seems unreasonable. So I would expect that the other is we, we like to, when we're using funds from the project, we like to spread them around. So and I think on other limitations I've described, oh, go ahead, Jonathan. Can you uh, put the links uh, you and uh, for from you on other tabs and our document? You, you bet, to, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that's a good suggestion. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. And last year's project. Very good. Yeah, that way we've got a reference to them. Excellent. Okay. Anything else on Community Bridge? Okay, let's go on to Google Season of Docs then. So reminder, July 9, and I believe it's 1800 UTC, it's 6 p.m. UTC, uh, is the application deadline. You must submit your application. They do not allow anything after their deadline. And I wouldn't even trust that. You should plan to submit July 8, right? Absolutely do not risk missing the deadline after all the work you've put into it. Uh, we are in the review process now. 
uh, for proposals. Um, proposals are sent to the sent as a Google Doc to the Jenkins Docs mailing list, right? And then uh, reviewers comment on the docs. I'm into my second second review now. I expect to get uh, additional reviews done likely before end of day tomorrow. So so watch your doc. Uh, if you've submitted one, if you have not submitted one, it's really it is very wise to submit one so that we can give you feedback. If you send if you submit something July 9th that we've never seen, we will still review it. Absolutely. But you lack the benefit then of our feedback beforehand that could have helped you have a better pre better presentation, a better proposal. And Oleg has already commented on several. So I've been seeing his comments and uh, and that's great. He's currently on holiday. He is walking, hiking through the Alps right now. So he's taking a, a few days off of well-deserved time off and enjoying time. Uh, so the July 9 application deadline, after July 9, July 9 through, let's double check what the date is. Google season of docs uh, timeline. The next big event there is, let's read it here, July 9 to 31 is the review period for the organization. So then we'll, we'll do project selection within the organization. So July 9 to July 31, review and selection by Jenkins organization. And then July 31 to August 16, Google reviews it. Of uh, proposals. And then I believe it's July, August 16 is the uh, August 17 or August 16 is the announcement, right? And we will not pre-announce that. That is serious, seriously terrible if we were to do such a thing. So Google owns the entire announcement. They're funding it. They have every right to be the ones who announces uh, the, the selected projects. Any questions there on timeline? Just maybe a small, uh, again, clarification. Uh, what would be the best approach uh, in case if you can recommend something, uh, Mark? It's possible, for, for example, to start implementing kind of writing documentation along your proposals right now without waiting till mm -hmm. uh, selection process will be over or just it's better to wait uh, to not do like, well, maybe unconfirmed work, unimproved and so on. What would be like, uh, if there are any suggestions on, on that? Well, every proposal I've seen has been very useful. We would take it whether or not it was selected as part of Google Season of Docs. So if you were to start on something incremental work-wise and can contribute it as pull requests, the project will be delighted. So I would, if you have capacity, we would love to have your contribution, whether or not it's in the context of Google Season of Docs. So mm -hmm. does does that address your question, Vlad? I don't I don't think you should hold back in the interest of trying to show a very fast start. I think that would actually be a a, a flawed way to do it. If you've got capacity at the moment, use that capacity, and and it's a great way to. Well, one of the things for me is it's a great way to show your involvement in the community by showing, hey, I'm continuing to submit pull requests during this, this period. This is not just me writing proposals here. I'm submitting pull requests that show that I'm involved. 
in other words, there is always a lot of things to do uh, to contribute to improve documentation. So the work will never be over oh, after this. Right. <laughs> yes, yes. You have you have spoke. Truer words have not been spoken. That was brilliant. Yes. Is there is there too much work to do? Always. Will we always have more things to do? Always. Absolutely. So so yes. Any anything you contribute that well let's let's take one simple sample the the wiki to to jenkins.io transition spreadsheet covers roughly one third or maybe one quarter of the total pages that are candidates i haven't even triaged about three quarters of the work and therefore there is lots of work to do lots of existing work and now that's not talking about the things that never even made it onto the wiki and there are plenty of those as well. I was just reading one today of a, a piece where in a wiki transition, somebody wrote one sentence. And I, I thought, that is the most interesting sentence. And I went looking and it turned into a four sentence or five sentence paragraph with 20 minutes of reading behind it to understand why those sentences should be inserted. It was one single phrase and mm -hmm. it became, it, but it was, Oh, wow, that's an important piece of information. I wonder where that came from. No one had ever documented it. It was completely undescribed, and it, it, it's very useful information to have. So, so, yes, absolutely. Lots of work to do, and we'd love to have contributions. Very good. Any other questions on Google Season of Docs topics? Yeah, hello, uh, Mark. Can you hear me? We can hear you, Stephen. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I'd like to know. Uh, I'm a. I'm not really. I haven't used Jenkins before, but I saw Jenkins. I've been wanting to do to to be part of the community, especially uh, as a PhD developer, the static analyzing and all things. I've been learning a few things so I haven't used Jenkins before. I just have learned lately. Uh, is it possible that I can still be part of this uh, season of thoughts? Does it require me to be some of the more that I must have used Jenkins before before I can be a part of uh, this? Because I'm still thinking if I should go and allow the post since not experienced in Jenkins. That's my question. I, I like that question. Stephen, I'm going to try to rephrase your question just to be sure that I've understood it. I think what you asked is, can an inexperienced technical writer be part of Google Season of Docs, right? So, and I would put it as two forms, either no Jenkins experience, I think that was what you had described, or potentially the also was, hey, I may not have any, I may not have been, have a technical writing experience, no significant technical writing experience. And the answer to both is no Jenkins experience is sort of expected. This is uh, largely expected, right? That most technical writers have not used Jenkins. Most of them have no experience with it. And they're very good at writing and very good at describing concepts and framing, framing things. And what, what they're bringing their expertise in writing and Jenkins experts like me and other mentors will help with how to how to be sure that that's a successful experience for them. Okay. So now, no technical writing experience is less likely to be successful because Google Season of Docs is tuned is is focused on ex, what I would call experienced technical writers. Now, just because it's focused on them does not mean you can't succeed if you're not an experienced technical writer, but it is that's their focus. They've said, hey, we would like to get experienced technical writers with little open source experience into open source communities. So their, their goal is, is helping open source communities with people who, who know how to write. So Stephen, does that address your question? 
Yeah, I think it does. The first answer, the no Jenkins experience is really my question. And I got the answer. Great. Yeah, so now, now no Jenkins experience now, this is a great time to get some experience with Jenkins, right? Particularly during this, this period of, of the Google season of Docs process. This is a great time to explore it, to test drive tutorials, see how they break down, to test drive uh, small little experiments that you can then discard. Okay. All right. Any other questions that others would like to ask? Okay, so the next piece is my status report. Last week, I said, I really said it, I know I did. I said I would be done with the reviews today. I apologize, I am not done with the reviews today. Mark started the reviews, but is not done. Uh, I hope to be done within one to two days. And you'll see on your individual document my comments as I make them. So the, the comments are live and visible because we use public documents. You can see everybody's documents, actually. So you can go browse them and see, hey, what did he comment about that proposal? What, was the, what did Oleg say about this? Those kind of things are all available to you. It's the power of public review like this. Now, Jonathan, you had a question about impact of revision delay when project is running. Could you ask, clarify further what you're asking there? Yes, of course. Uh, Oleg sent me a question about a topic of my proposal, and uh, that that topic is about uh, one item of my proposal to migrate a year of uh, one one hundred fifteen pages for migrate uh, dot week to Jenks IO, and uh, he said it may be a a a big number because we have the process review then can delay our work when project is running right uh, but uh, that that question calls my attention calls my attention because uh, for example we put uh, what I, I downgrade the number for 100 pages but uh, our work uh, could be impacted because uh, we have a delay and review so to resolve that point, I propose, uh, I call the responsibility, a responsibility to me. So for example, if I send to Jake's organization 100 PR, uh, PR about the weak migration, and independently of the Duke, uh, Google season uh, period, I will finish them, okay? Just for not, not impact our work because we have only three months to work uh, uh, and the migration topic. If the delay, it's big delay, we can just uh, migrate to only 20 or 30 pages. It's a small number for three months. So, is so that th clear to you? I think so. So I think what you're asking is, do would Google Season of Docs consider the thing successful if the receiving organization failed in its responsibility to give timely feedback. Is that a fair way, yeah. fair way to say it? Yeah, yes, fair way. Yeah, and I think they would. So part of, part of the docs consider a, a project done, even if the mentoring organization failed in its responsibility to, to review. And, and that, that's one of the reasons why we assign, one of the reasons we assign two, two mentors to each, uh, each contributor, to each, let's call it writer, there we go. Uh, so that we don't have, we have less risk that 
in addition to those two assigned mentors, um, there are other reviewers um, available beyond the mentors. Okay. So, so I don't expect that to be a blocking topic, but if it were to become one, there is actually an evaluation process that Google Season of Docs has that allows you to flag that to them saying, hey, my mentoring organization has collapsed on itself or is no longer behaving properly. Okay, thank you. So, and I, if I recall correctly, they have, yeah, here we go. So September 14 starts doc development and then project reports and final work products and then evaluations. So, so, and then there is this additional option for long running projects. If we have project submissions that need more than the, the September to November to end of November. So let's see. So this is about 10 weeks, right? Four weeks in November, four weeks in October. Yeah. So this is roughly a 10 week project. Uh, it's allowed to go for long running projects all the way into March of 2021. Okay. Mark. Okay. Yes. Uh, I have uh, another question. Ahead. Go ahead. Uh, for example, you are in the next two days and you are working on the review uh, for, of our proposal. If, for example, you, you uh, get the, our project uh, needs to migrate to a long term project, uh, did you, uh, do you signalize to us or, or no? That's a good question, and I don't know the answer to that one. That's, that one, that's when I'll need to do some research on Google Season of Docs' page, long-term project. Uh, will the submitter, will the writer be notified that this is really a long-term project? Yes, because we need to know this information before we send our application. Right, right, absolutely. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, so I, I think that's a very practical, practical question. And Mark has the action item to learn more, study more about how the decisions are made. Because I would assume that we would not expect you to be on a long running project unless you were fully aware that you were submitting a proposal for a long running project and the organization agrees, yes, it's a long running project. So, so if, if there were any disconnect between your perception of whether it's a long running project and the, and the mentoring organization's perception, that would be a big red flag that would, that would say, oh, we've got a problem. Yeah. For example, use the preview, preview sample. And another question, if you think uh, 100 pages, it's uh, a lot of pages to work in 10 weeks. So maybe we need to downgrade the name, the number again. So uh, we need to offer your feedback to know about it. Right, right, exactly. So, but I think it's, I was assuming you were going to ask, would we use a long running project um, to increase the scope of work we could complete. Yeah. And I yeah. think that's why we would do long running running projects. So if 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 we said, ooh, this project is such a dramatic improvement that it's worth the complexity of making it a six month project instead of a two and a half month project, that's that's a valid a valid point for discussion then. Okay, thank you. Good, very good, excellent question. All right, any, any other questions related to Google Season of Docs? 
uh, I guess, Mark, uh, probably I forgot uh, completely uh, about the results outcome of the entire project. I guess Google announces results and I just need to study this. Probably there is some information about this. Uh, what may be the outcome of this? What are possible results? Uh, uh, is it binary result? Is it like something else? And what is the sequence of this? Good, good question. This is my first experience with Google Season of Docs having been accepted, but I believe what it is, is there is, there is a pass fail. And if pass, then reimbursement is made. In addition to pass fail, there's, we do things like we'll blog the changes that have been brought about this. We'll usually have the, the person who was the writer act as a conference speaker bring them to invite them to speak at, at various online meetups or other conference locations to say hey we would like you to talk to this um, last year for instance with google summer or summer of code we had two of the students that flew to portugal to report at devops world and they did presentations there and it's a very, very good thing because it brings a new contributor to the community, someone who this was their first major effort in the Jenkins project, can share their insights, what it meant to work in the project and what they learned and what was hard and what was easy. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so those, those are the kinds of things that typically happen um, in that is, yes, we'll definitely have you do a, we would have people do a, a presentation, likely several, uh, a, a likely presentations in conference settings and a blog post to say, hey, look at this, here's, here's what, what we've made progress on, et cetera. Mm -hmm. okay. Or even maybe in case if it, it will not be implemented in documentation, it will not be uh, merged, for instance, maybe it will be reflected in the roadmap in the future development right. for the next release or something like this. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, yes, I should stop using the word yup. My apologies. I, I'm from the Western United States and therefore all of my poor, poor grammatical constructs get popped out. So yes. <laughs> my, my poor, my poor phrasings, my apologies. All right. Any, any other topics on Google season of docs? Uh, hey Mark. Uh, yes. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead, please. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, what, uh, what I may be asking can be repetitive, but um, what I'm saying is, like, are there any shortcomings for long, uh, long-term projects? Like, uh, can an a proposal be uh, intentionally uh, aimed at, uh, like, this is it? The time can be uh, six months time. Uh, and the project can be uh, proposal can be framed with the time frame of six months. Or are there any special benefits or special shortcomings uh, of long running project over the short one, like which has three months and then? Uh, that's a very good question. Unfortunately, I don't have enough experience to give an honorable answer. Uh, the the I I would think of. The, the typical risks from long running projects are, are the typical risks of any long running project, right? So uh, long running projects are easier to slip, right? miss schedules more easily, right? They just tend to longer, the longer the project, the more likely it is to, to miss its schedules. Uh, long running projects are harder to predict. But they also have, on the plus side, long-running projects could be much more valuable. So, so there are there are strengths and weaknesses to each. Um, I, I apologize that that isn't a really good answer to the question, because I think what you were asking was, in the specifics of the Jenkins organization and Google season of docs, is there a reason why you should choose a, to write for a long running, running project plan or a, sh a regular length project plan? And I, yeah. I don't have a good answer for that. 
I'll, I'll discuss it further with, with colleagues and see if they've got some insights that can be offered. Would uh, it, cool. Go ahead. I interrupted, please speak. Uh, no, 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 uh, it's cool, like I'm, I'm, I'm answered. Okay, all right, so Meg, then you were going to make a comment. I was just going to ask, some projects you can do this and some you can't, whether you could produce a project that was in two pieces that if it's a regular term when we do this much and if I got a long-term grant, we could also do this much. I don't know if that is acceptable and it does, you know, it doesn't always work. It depends on the nature of the work. And that's a good question. I, I'm going to phrase it as a question, Meg, that can a project proposal um, specify oh, yes, Lord. the alternative alternatives if run as a, as a regular project, or as a long running project. And, and I've, I don't have enough experience to give the answer, but I think it's an excellent question. Sorry for abusing your, your, yeah. your observation, Megan, turning it into a question. No, I meant it to be a question. You just phrased it better, so we're good. Okay, great. All right. Mark, uh, yes. uh, about the Maggie question, uh, did you want to, uh, uh, do you want to we put in our proposal our project period, the short one or the long, or not? I, so uh, that's, a, that's a very good question, Jonathan. I think the project proposal yeah, should, in include, our should include a timeline, right? And yeah, therefore, your uh, please continue. Uh, that timeline infers short, short, regular, or long running. Yeah. I believe there is a topic about the timeline, so that uh, it's possible to realize if it's a short, a regular regular project or a long-term one from the timeline? I think so. Yeah. yeah. I, I think yeah. Okay. as a matter of practicality, we absolutely do want a timeline because a timeline gives you a way to think about how to partition the work into chunks. Yeah. And it gives us a way to assess, have you thought about the chunks? Any any other questions on season of docs? I guess I just wanted to mention one more possible question about just thinking how to phrase it correctly. Uh, requirements may change while we're proposing uh, making some proposals to uh, to Google. Uh, by requirements, I mean environment. Uh, uh, for instance, we uh, discussed in the previous meetings possibility of uh, providing uh, hardware in case if we are looking for deployment, let's say to Amazon Cloud, something like this. Who is going to host, who is going to pay and how technical writers will access the infrastructure in case they need to implement. Uh, so how we communicate uh, to Google in case if there is change in requirements during the process of implementation uh, phase, something like this. Good, yeah, very good question. So how do we adapt to changes? Who do we need to inform of changes? Maybe that's what you're uh, in addition. Who do we need to inform of changes? 
um, what are the limitations on changes? Exactly. exactly. Uh, yeah, those are, uh, those are very good questions. And as far as I can tell, I'll have to do some research to be sure. Um, but I believe we have the flexi flexibility to adapt to changing environments. Um, so adaptation is allowed. Um, it's, I'm not sure I would call it expected, but it's absolutely accepted. Uh, with Google Summer of Code, it's we, we fully expect that we will learn things as we're doing the project that we didn't know before we started it. And therefore, we will use what we learn to adapt and refine the project. Mm -hmm. And I would think something similar here as well, though many of the topics in Season of Docs are better, more, more clearly well-known or clearly understood than some of the coding projects we've embarked on. Some of the coding projects we've embarked on were, were rather optimistic, hopeful, or uh, um, the phrase blue sky, you know, not entirely sure how to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, the documentation efforts that we've got so far anyway, most of them are describing things that are already exist in the software and we, we need to just describe them well. So, but adaptation is allowed and accepted. Uh, I don't think that there's any formal, formal notification to Google, uh, if I remember right, is only required if a writer abandons or a project abandons. You know, if a writer says, hey, I've had a personal circumstance change grave, Ill, serious illness or whatever, I cannot continue. Then Google must be notified and they, they have a series of steps they take to deal with that. Uh, but I'll have to double check just to be sure. And limitations on changes, um, that one I don't have a sense of, of if, if the project accepted your proposal, your project plan, but then came back to you later and said, no, we want you to completely do something entirely different. I suspect Google would step in and say that is bad behavior and, and they would likely do things like threaten to drop us from the program. Because they, you know, they, you did all this work to create a plan. We did the work to review the plan, and then we decided to throw the plan away. You know, that that's that's really bad behavior for your effort and for ours. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Excellent. So one last item. There is an upcoming me meeting for mentors. I've sent an invitation, or what I call a poll. Um, I would like to have more mentors than we have right now because the complexities of the world right now with coronavirus make it so that we just can't always guarantee that everyone will always be available. And so I'm, I'm actively recruiting. Uh, mentors can be added at any time during the project. So it's not that we have to obtain all the mentors up front and we're not allowed to change them, we're not allowed to add, we can actually add additional supporting mentors to help. We just like to have them agreed in advance so that they can check with their employers and others to be sure that they, the employer is willing to allow them to, to help us for the time that we need. Uh, Mark. So your your proposal is, for example, if now our proposal the uh, project is not approved to be a technical writer, you are offering offering to us the possibility to be a mentor. Is that that right? Oh, that's an interesting thought. Let me put that down. Yes, could could a <laughs> could a technical writer act as a mentor if not accepted? As a writer, yeah. and I, I, that's a brilliant idea. I don't know why not. Yes, that's. Uh, I think that's very good. It's 
the what we need in mentors is Jenkins skills. And if you've got Jenkins skills uh, or are willing to rapidly develop them, that would there would be no reason you couldn't act as a mentor. Yeah. Okay. That's so very good. We need to signalize this uh, with uh, a preview signalized it so or not I, i'm sorry ask the question about again, our intention about our intention to be a mentor we need to signalize right now in, in that oh. meeting or oh no 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 Maybe. you can you could you well it would be it would be great to have you join this up if you have interest in being a mentor having you join this this meeting about mentoring would be a great thing to do if you don't no. join the meeting, you still are welcome to be a mentor. There's not, it's not that you must attend this meeting in order to be allowed to mentor, quite the opposite. If you have interest in mentoring at any point in the, in the project, we're willing to consider adding mentors. Okay, I got it, thank you. That was that was a really great question. I I like that. I had not thought of turning it on its on its head. We, for instance, we would not do that with Google Summer of Code because we wouldn't ask invite a student with no Jenkins experience to become a mentor, right? That they're they're not going to succeed. But with skilled technical writers, it actually is possible, and and a number of writers already have Jenkins experience, so they could become mentors and could be quite valuable as mentors. Yeah, good question. Any other questions? Yeah, just about our timeline. Next Monday will be our last uh, meeting before the application period. Uh, all these answers you planning to speak about them in the next meeting or during the week? Question, we could, what if we said, let me look at my calendar. I'm gonna bring it up on another screen in case there's something sensitive on it, but let me look at my calendar because there's, there's nothing preventing us from having an additional office hour sessions between now and July 9. So July 9 is a Thursday. So we will meet the 6th of July. We could, we could choose to do another session Thursday afternoon this week, for instance, the second or the third, Thursday or Friday, or we could meet next week, the 6th and the 8th or the 6th and the 7th. If you would like that, happy to do so. Um, Mark, do we have people in the United States taking days off? Uh, oh, that's good. Yeah. Friday is a national holiday. Oh, right, right. It's Independence Day. Yes. Right. The 4th of July is Independence and Day. And some companies are extending that by an extra day one way or another. Yeah, so it would probably department. be best to do it. We could consider, we can consider meeting on Thursday, July 2nd. That would still give you a full week prior to the due date to to deal with it, um, or uh, let's see, or July 7, Tuesday, Ju July 7. Do you have a preference? Are you interested in either of those? For example, it can be uh, in July 7, no problem, if it, uh, the answer is no impact in our proposal. Yes. So. We need to have time to change the proposals. Right, and, and my, my assumption is I would never assume no impact just because that inevitably something happens. Therefore, I'd yeah. lobby for the second if, if either the, we could even do it the first, Wednesday if you'd like. We could either do it Wednesday, July 1, or Tuesday, Thursday, July 2, or also meet on the 7th. You, you, let me know which of those you would like and I will schedule it and invite you all.
And did you prefer create another pool like the same the first time? And oh, I can do that. There. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. You send the, the link in Gitter or Google Groups. Right, yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll send the, the link here. I'll send a poll for those for, and I'm, I'm going to actually drop Tuesday, July 7, because we still could add that, but I'll send a poll checking for July 1, July 2, and possibly even July 3. And okay. uh, for those three, those three afternoons, and we'll, we'll get one of them on the calendar. Okay. Now there will also be a office hours. I believe it's scheduled for Thursday morning. Uh, so Thursday, let's do it UTC. I think it is Thursday at 2 p.m. UTC uh, with Old Ike. Uh, I think it's 2 p.m. question mark. Don't don't trust my feeble memory there. There's there's an authoritative source, but that's roughly. So people who are getting comments with Oleg that they wanted to discuss might want to go to Oleg's office hours, right? Right. Well, it's just Oleg's Oleg's are better suited for, for instance, for Stephen um, on the African continent. He's much better aligned with the Swiss time zone than he is with the Denver, Colorado time zone in the United States. Yes. This is this is getting late night for Stephen's time. All right. I think we've covered the topics I wanted. Thanks very much. I will post a recording of this session. Uh, we'll talk again either Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, and look forward to seeing you then. Great. Thank you. Great. Bye. Thanks, so everybody. Thanks. Bye. Bye.